Bruce. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to oppose this bill and urge colleagues to vote against it. Whatever your views on abortion, on several key grounds, its potentially damaging impact on freedom of speech, the fact that we already have sufficient relevant and effective legislation, we don't need more, and because the government looked into and rejected a bill of this type less than two years ago. In 2018, the then Home Secretary conducted an in-depth review about protest activities outside abortion clinics. The outcome was clear. He said, introducing national buffer zones would not be a proportionate response. Why did he conclude this? One clear reason was, as he said, legislation already exists to restrict protest activities that cause harm to others. Where a crime is committed, the police have the power to act so that people feel protected. There are, by my reckoning, at least six pieces of legislation already available for authorities to tackle behaviour that might cause harassment, alarm or disorder. The Criminal Justice Act, the Public Order Act, the Protection from Harassment Act, the Serious Organised Crime and Police Act, the Anti-Social Behaviour Crime and Policing Act and the Local Government Act. We do not need more. The Government's review also found that anti-abortion activities take place outside a very small number of abortion facilities. Of the 363 hospitals and clinics in England and Wales carrying out abortions, just 36 had experienced anti-abortion activities. Evidence showed these activities to predominantly, and again I quote from the Home Secretary's conclusion, to be passive in nature predominantly. The main activities reported to us that take place during protests include praying, displaying banners and handing out leaflets. There were relatively few reports of the more aggressive activities of the type described by the Honourable Lady for Ealing Central and Acton. Now, the type of behaviour described by the Honourable Lady is simply not replicated widely across the country. In fact, for over a quarter of a century, in places from Ealing to Edgbaston, people concerned about abortion have, in the main, held peaceably, gathered peaceably to pray near abortion clinics, and they have gently offered a leaflet or the opportunity of a conversation. Actually, colleagues, how different is that from our political campaigning, apart from the praying, that is, for many of us, though some of us do that too. Little trouble was registered the last, until the last few years at these clinics when opposing campaigners started to arrive in groups, for example with a megaphone. In my opinion, to deliberately stir up conflict where none had existed before. Let me be clear, I do not condone aggressive protest activities outside abortion clinics, but these are in the minority and imposing national leg legislation where it is not required to tackle these would be a drastic overreaction. A drastic overreaction because of the potential damage this bill could do to more, the more widely held freedom of speech in this country. As the then Home Secretary said, in this country it is a long-standing tradition that people are free to gather together and demonstrate their views. This is something to be rightly proud of. And not only freedom of speech could be threatened, but also freedom of assembly, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, the right to peaceably protest, the right to receive information. Fundamental liberties underpinning our democracy and many hard won. This is a dangerous bill with potentially far-reaching implications. Everyone has the right to free speech within the law. This includes the right to say things which, though lawful, others may find disturbing or upsetting. Of course, free speech is not an absolute right. There are limitations on prohibiting speech which incites violence or constitutes harassment or is defamatory. But as I've said, there are laws to deal with that. But the law does not prohibit speech which others might find upsetting or offensive. I find it upsetting to hear that 9 million unborn children have been aborted since 1967. One every three minutes in Great Britain today. 600 every working day. 
but we must not allow a situation where minority groups holding unpopular or unfashionable opinions which are within the law are shut down by those seeking to prevent the free speech of people whose views they disagree with. What other points of view could be delegitimised next? We must safeguard free speech here as precious. And no wonder that a host of prominent human rights groups and civil society campaigners, who I suspect would not share my views on abortion, have spoken against the proposed buffer or censorship zones proposed by this bill, including Peter Tatchell, the Manifesto Club, Big Brother Watch, Freedom on Censorship and the Freedom Association and Liberty. Liberty has strongly criticised the public spaces protection orders referred to by the Honourable Lady as powers that allow for the criminalisation of a very broad range of conduct. And Liberty is calling on the government to get rid of these overbroad and under-scrutinised powers. A PSPO can be created simply if a local authority is satisfied that two conditions are met. If activities in the area have a detrimental effect on quality of life, a hugely subjective test, especially when applied in such a sensitive area as abortion, and if the activities are likely to be continuing. Not only would such nationwide censorship zones set an illiberal precedent of government censorship, but they would also make people fearful of expressing views about abortion elsewhere outside such zones for fear of breaking the law or perhaps of being guilty of some hate crime, the so-called chilling effect on free speech. And this may well affect freedom of speech on other topics. How soon will it be before legal pro-life expression is unacceptable anywhere in the public sphere? Or indeed views on other issues which cause people to feel uncomfortable? This House must safeguard freedom of speech and oppose a bill that risks silencing the views of countless people from public life, including those like the, the woman Alina, who says on the website, Be Here For Me, how she kept her daughter, now aged seven, after a quiet encounter outside an abortion clinic. When she went into the clinic, she was only told about how to have an abortion. But she now says having had that encounter with a woman outside. I felt I did have a choice. I could choose yes or no. This is not a pro-choice bill. It is a regressive bill, and I urge colleagues to vote against it today. Yeah.